Okay, so the first thing about the the the, uh, the piece that just went off is not about dead prayer. Um, the piece is about Shannon McCullough, um, and it's very important. Uh, you know, it, it was it was his eye at being able to take a couple of days, some snapshots, shots of years, and a look at some artists' lives. Um, you know, like Jr. said, we're much more than just some artists, but it's important that you see it because. Um, that way, or at least that it's a that it's a documentary about Shannon, because uh, hip hop is a, uh, a, a a an art that we participate in together. It's not um, you know a spectator sport. It has never been that way. Um, so that also has to qualify my answer about what hip hop is doing, where hip hop is going, um, because the way we can serve hip hop on this particular plate today. Um, only allows you to be able to see, or pretty much relegate to that as uh, this specimen on a petri dish um, for the world to investigate, um, not in a in, in any kind of way, an interactive way, but one to kind of poke at or criticize or be able to be seen as something outside of ourselves, which ain't nothing about how music is, um, or definitely not how hip hop is is organized. So we participated in uh, we participate in it uh, from an organized perspective, knowing that each and every person around us has a role. Um, by no means necessary are we uh, so e egotistical, even though uh, it is an ego sport. Hip hop can be um, to believe that we're doing this by ourselves. We know that it takes a channel to Captain McCullum to even be able to uh, show you what we're doing because we can't. Um, you know, and these are the most important people. These are the makers of history. These are the makers of, uh, of culture, the real producers of real things in life and are not just the artists sitting in front with the, with the microphone. So to take it and put it into that kind of perspective where there's this, this kind of reciprocal relationship in hip hop, then it also kind of um, insinuates that you all have a role in it as well and not just the, the, you know, the, the, you know, just, just the, the person holding the microphone. Um, Right now, you've been giving it um, what we've seen today, handed down to you from the perspective of the ruling class mind who intends to dominate culture in America. Everywhere we go, hip hop is regarded as American culture, pop culture. Uh, whether we're in Europe or Bermuda or Africa, Brazil, or in the South Bronx, this is hip hop has become pop culture at the hands of the ruling class because it has been able to be defined that way. But the, the real uh, uh, lane and avenue that uh, that uh, hip hop provides is a voice. Still, is a voice of the voiceless, many voiceless, poor and oppressed colonial subjects who, um, with this discussion I just had last night, making music. Um, if they would have it their way, they would make you think that a small five percent of people are hip hop music. When the reality is. There's 95% of the masses of the music who are making the music, who are part of music, who might not be um, having no money or rolling around in a phantom or whatever, but who talk about the issues, who see it the way it is, who see reality, who report reality, and it's your, uh, it's your responsibility as uh, also a part of this uh, hip, uh, of hip hop to find those people who are reporting that reality and to uh, make less important what we understand as the bourgeois control mechanism of the media with hip hop is right in hand with just like uh, the New York Times and the New York Post and the rest and report it for ourselves and see it for ourselves and be able to be informed by it for ourselves and that's where hip hop is going if you choose to let it and, and take your own brain back and think for yourself, that's where hip hop is going. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm Shabbat. Um, what really stuck out to me, what you just said, is that uh, hip hop or music is the language of the oppressed, of the masses of oppressed, and it made me think back to um, slavery. And during slavery, you have slaves that you can utilize music, that you can utilize them. Uh, to relay messages to each other so that in a, in a fashion and way that the oppressors did not understand. Um, and it's quite interesting. Um, it's really a part of our, our culture, it's just thing that's within it. And um, when I first came here to the Bay, I'm from New York, from the East Coast, I came here to the Bay, um, I see they got this dance, they call it Crunk. Dance, y'all all familiar with this dance, Crunk? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Some of you are familiar with it. Right. And then um, it's similar to what they're doing in Africa, you know, but they didn't necessarily mold it after them or try to copy them, but, you know, they came up with this dance with this art form and then later on discovering that, you know, something similar happened um, there in Africa. So it's within our nature. Um, it speaks to us. But, you know, everything has a positive and a negative and it has to be balanced out right. You know, when Tupac came out, he's one of my role models um, growing up. Tupac, you know, he's very political and uh, he was attacked. You know, there was messages in this music. And the politicians, they openly attacked him, they attacked his message. But if you fast forward to today, you know, you see we're about to go and talk about uh, sex and drugs and, um, you know, all the, they, they highlight all the negative aspects of uh, what's taking place in our community and they glorify it. And they're no longer attacked. You know, um, they're allowed to operate. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very important, um, you know, that uh, we support the uh, conscious um, artists and you know, conscious music. One of the things I say, you know, as far as this movement is concerned, there are many different uh, ways and levels of raising the awareness of the people. And it can be from speaking from the pulpit, it can be from uh, putting in actual physical work in the trenches, it could be through uh, artwork, you know, it could be through um, hip hop, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but there's a positive and negative. Then a few months ago, um, me and Brother JR, we went to visit uh, Moon, Abu Jamal, who's on death row, about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania. Um, M1 um, was supposed to come with us, but due to unforeseen circumstances, we couldn't make it. But you know, one of the things that we had told us, you know, is that he, uh, you know, he wished that they would utilize uh, music more in the movement uh, and culture more in the movement. And uh, one of the things he also uh, emphasized to us is that we support um, people like M1. You know, that's the only one really mentioned uh, M1. But the only one to name. But you know, um, for me, you know, growing up to hear conscious hip hop, you know, it's kind of whack. You know, when people try to put out conscious hip hop, it doesn't sound too good. But the first time I heard M1, some of M1's music, I was like, all right, yeah, I'm digging that. I heard more and more and more. Now I'm hooked. You know, he's one of my um, flavor rappers. So, um, where do I see the course of music going? I will hope to see it going in, in, a positive, in a positive place. But who knows? You know, we have people uh, in power, you know, our oppressors who don't have our best interests at heart. And um, they're using the system against us. You know, major yeah. distribution and so forth. Uh, you know, certain rappers and entertainers they got put out uh, that conscious music, that good music that they don't really want to match to get a hold of. You know, they put a hold on that. So um, I hope to see it go in the right place. But um, it's what's in the hands of me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. definitely concur. It's being used against us. Um, even here locally, you know, we have, you know, our KMEF and, and, and these stations, and uh, just like we out here supporting our uh, rent, we need to be supporting or uh, rallying up and uniting against KMEF for the full fact that That's why it's called program. It's the program us to, you know, believe in this is hip hop. That is not hip hop. Hip hop is really, you know, under siege. It's really, you know, like you said, the hands of, of the corporations. And, um, you know, when we dial in on KMEL, we're just saying, yeah, we support it. So by us turning it off and um, <coughs> supporting uh, underground radio, you know, underground music, you know, us. That would say a lot. Um, even with the music videos, you know, uh, I, um, I've directed a lot of them here locally, and I have several students under the two business, you know, um, directing them. But you know, the the philosophy I, I've given them is, you know, if the song is whack and you're not feeling it, then don't do it. You know, deny it. You know, it's, it's not about the money. It's about the message and and um, and their listening. Uh, I don't know, it's just a state of emergency for the hip hop as well, just like it is with the police and the young brothers getting killed out there, man. It's just really, you know, us against them. And we gotta unite across the board from politics to, you know, MCs on the mic. You gotta let them MCs know. You know, you, you, we gotta keep them and uh uh at bay and um what I'm looking for. We have to uh 